Hello, everybody. Um, I promised a few people that I would have done a video to show how the Volca sample works. But then I started working on the Volca kick. And after I released that, I started working on the update, which is the version 1.1. And um, yeah, I'm basically making this video now on the version 1.1. And I will also use it as a video to show what I made uh, in the update. Um, and also to showcase to newcomers how everything works. There is also a PDF guide that explains most of the stuff I will, stuff I will show you. Uh, and then I will go through the changelog um, and yeah, basically walk you through everything. Uh, first thing first, you will have to select the MIDI. Um, just for clarification, this doesn't have any output. Um, um, but yeah you have here the MIDI devices. You have the MIDI input device and the MIDI output device. The MIDI input device might be useful only if you are using a um, the standalone version of this, but not VST. In fact, there will be an error and I will solve this in future updates. What you will need to do is select your MIDI output. In my case, it's uh, is MIDI out two of my U6 MIDI Pro and I press OK and you see this is the arrow, it works fine. So I have loaded here the second uh, song or track, I don't know how they call it, of like the mm, the factory preset things that they have. So uh, to just show you how it works, uh, I will probably do a solo of one part, but first of all I will play. And for example, I know that part three is um, the club, and you can see that the solo works. And um, probably I will try to find a more populated track to show you how all the other sample works. Okay, this is quite populated, so every change I will make. So first of all, this uh, is only a MIDI output; doesn't have any MIDI input. That comes from the actual Korg uh, vocal sample because it doesn't have any MIDI input. I know there is an ACK or whatever, but I don't have it. It's not developed into it. Um, so what I want to um, show you is how this works. So this is just the, um, the positions that are like the normal one, the default one, the initial one. Um, and I will show you that they'll work. But of course, once you start changing, for example, I don't know what the decay is for this part within the hardware. So once you start changing, it might be a different one. But then of course, um, if you, for example, save a preset part and that's part of the update and I will talk more about it later. Um, and also a global preset part. So let me go through it. You can change the attack, the decay, you have the panning, of course you can appreciate this only if you have um, headphones with you. If you double click, it will go to its default position. This is not true only for the sample part because it shouldn't have a default position. The level I selected at midpoint for default, but yeah. You can change the level. This is now is the pitch uh, decaying attack, so. click you have the reverse another thing is that everything that is written in italics will only work if you have the Pageant 7 firmware so it's an of an unofficial firmware um, and this is the reverse the loop the mute the solo the reverb on the reverb type which is actually unlocked only by the Pageant firmware 
and the part select. So all these things are, um, as I said, it's just part of the Pajan firmware. All the other ones like attack, decay, pan, level, amp, and all these things uh, will work with just simply the core vocal sample. They will work fine. And then, yeah, start. Length, the high cut filter, and then I will show you that you can actually select this sample here. Now, I do not know which one was it, so yeah, that might be a little bit of an issue when, when you are using them just as MIDI output, this might be an issue, but this brings to the preset part, or maybe I will show you something else, which is the fact that you can automate basically everything. So if you go more, here you go. You have all the parameters. I think you can also use the MIDI CC learn from within your um, DAW to control all of these. So the way they are is, first of all, they're organized per part. So there are all the things for part one, then part two, and yeah, they're basically called after, for example, sample is the sample section, which is the first four knobs, and then sample is the actual sample, part one, then high cut, start point, length, and all of these until the end. And then the first three are part select, which is part of the update. Here there was an unassigned value. Um, then there is river type and river mix. So these are the first three. And I will show you that it works just fine. Uh, let's see. So we basically go on part five. I had to cut because I was modifying part one. So we go on part five here. And we want, for example, to control the high cut. Now it's at the maximum, it's at the top. If you never change the knob, it will be at the bottom, basically. I'm, might solve that in the future but anyway let's do a simple automation here and i will just show you that it works so we are playing our track and so you see you have everything in the automation and yeah this is pretty much part of the video where i show you how it works i will now go through the update parts and i will go through step by step and this will also show some of the features that's why i didn't want to do a part where i show them and then so the first one is the resizing that the volca kick already had and yeah it's basically a drug Sometimes do the resizing, you have a little border here. If you close it and you reopen it, it's gone. So it's more of a feature. Um, it's more of a feature um, of, I don't know, probably is too many things going on. And when you resize it, uh, it will bring some problems. Okay. Um, then what is... Okay, so now the solo button can be on uh, at one time. So if you, before it was a little bit weird, now it just works as the vocal sample. So if I move it here, you have that clap. If I go here, before you didn't have this, you had to unsolo and then solo again. So this is part of what I uh, solved. And the mute button now follows the same logic as all the other button, which is zero is zero and one is one. Um, and it's basically because before, so in reality, the mute logic is reverse, but I found a way to um, unreverse it. So now when it's zero, it's unmuted. And when it's one, it's muted. 
um, before it was the other way around, which is actually how the exact MIDI messages have been sent. So the message is actually sent is that when it wants to go to like unmuted, it will send a one. So that, that's why before it was like this, but I saw these. Um, reverse and loop labels are not in bold anymore. Before they were in bold as a mistake. VST vendor is now me for before it was CTRLR X. And I added the part select, which is this part on top. And so if I go here on step mode, right now we're on part one. Okay, and if I select here part two, you see it goes to part two and part four and yeah, it basically follows the different parts. That's all it does. I thought it was doing something different before. Uh, I actually tried to use it. So um, that's all it does. And of course, even, and of course, even if you're not in step mode here, I will just change what the hardware will change um, has the knobs itself. So yeah, that's that's all it does. Um, and this brings to the part that it deleted an unassigned value. When I show you the values, there was unassigned zero instead of part select. Um, and that's was some another part that I solved. And I think the biggest part and what everybody was interested more than these things is the fact that you can now change and like you can save and load present for each part okay and i think it's the best thing so another thing is the send button which i think i might show you first the send because it makes more sense so basically the send will send whatever it's here it will send it directly to there so for example this that goes in sample zero this was the clap okay So this was the clap. If we now we send this, it will basically create the kick that is at sample zero. You see, you don't have the clap anymore. So it basically send whatever it is here, it will send it to to the output. Okay, um, and that's pretty much it. And this send is global, so it will send everything here. Another thing is that you can load presets, and I added so this is the part present so i added these which are the ones that i found from an article i might put it in the comments and yeah so for example we wanted the 909 club we opened this now we have the 909 club if we solo it you can hear it's also the level is also the ones that i saved it on which is a 64 but yeah and then you can also load a preset that is global and it has two different um, extension um, so you have one for the parts and you can load it at any part and one for the global and for example if we have I don't know the 808 ones that is from the same article uh, it will not rename the different parts as they are loaded um, and here the only thing I did was change the samples. Um, I didn't touch anything else, but yeah, if you s like do everything. The only thing that does not save is the solo button and the part select for obvious reason. First of all, part select doesn't do much and the solo button, you cannot save it because basically when you send a zero in um, a one part, it will basically how do i explain this so basically the midi message that solos as unsolos a track is zero so whenever you send a zero it's when it unsolos a track or a solos a track so if it saves one zero and it will send it even if it's not a zero like like the button is off it will still send a zero, so it will still solo a part. So it's a little bit weird to explain, but yeah, it's basically to not have some issues. One thing though is that if you have the solo part soloed and you do a load, uh, I don't know in the part, but I tried before in the global, it will mess up a little bit the things. I will fix this in a future update, but 
remember to unsolo or something before you load or you will have some graphic messed up thing okay um that's the only thing that i wanted to say and as i say send button which i showed and as i say probably it makes more sense i don't know if when you open the door it will send everything but um i'm sure that if you have multiple instances, maybe not for the Volca sample, but for the Volca kick, and I will show how it makes more sense in the video for the Volca kick, um, it will make more sense because you might have multiple instances of the VST. And for example, you want to record a specific sound, you do send, record that sound, and you need to click send when you record another sound. So it sends all the global parameters. And that's why I put it there. Or I put it there if I don't know you forget you forgot to select the MIDI and you already started changing things because you already knew what you wanted to change and then your changes are not reflected. You can just do send or send just one part if that's what you were doing. Um and that's pretty much it. Probably the only thing I didn't show you uh working was the reverb and I will show it to you now. I don't even know what is part 5 actually. I think it's the clap. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, here it gives you some information on how to activate all the changes. It's from a guide that I found online. I don't remember the guy, but uh, it's from a guy for the Pajan software. The Pajan firmware is 0 0.7. And yeah, if you want to give me a donation, this is the link. It's also in the um, in the description. You can contact me on Reddit if you have an issue or just drop a comment here on... Um, on YouTube and yeah I will keep updating it uh, there are some things that I want to improve like GUI improvements some bug fixes like the one of the solo button that I mentioned and yeah another thing I want to say is that if you give a donation all this money will be used towards this project towards the Volca right now there is only a VST for Volca sample and Volca kick but uh, I will make a I will make a um, poll on the subreddit Volkas uh, once I reach the money to buy a new Volka on the next Volka I will buy and then the next Volka will develop a VST for. So if you want to support these uh, projects, um, I will be really grateful to you and I think also everybody else that then will use the other VST will be uh, really grateful to you and that's pretty much it that's everything from my side and thank you thank you very much um for watching this video and go and download this free so you have nothing to lose